This video segment will show you how to make simple two-part molds using urethane RTV molding rubber. Two-part molds are necessary because some shapes cannot be removed from a one-part mold. Shapes like these can be molded by just fastening them to a flat surface and pouring the mold material over them. Shapes like these could not be removed if they were encapsulated in mold rubber. So that is where the two-part mold comes in. We will demonstrate using urethane RTV. However, the same process could be used with silicone RTV. The first step is to look at your part and determine where the mold line will be. The mold line is where the two halves of the mold will come together. We will demonstrate with this simple Christmas tree. Once you have determined how the part will be positioned, a mold container must be found or made. We will make ours with acrylic as demonstrated in an earlier video. The key here is to glue the sides together securely, but do not bond the walls to the base too tightly. Using a glue gun, we can build the box to a custom size using these strips of acrylic. We will leave at least one quarter inch space all the way around the part. Once the sides are glued, we will lightly attach the base. Be sure to seal the base so that it is watertight. The bond does not have to be strong, but it must not leak or liquid RTV may flow out. The second step is to embed the part in clay. Using a non-hardening clay such as this, we will embed the part approximately halfway. The finished clay should be smooth with no fissures or holes which would allow the liquid rubber to flow down under the part. This is the advantage of using clear sides on the box. Because this part has a flat base, we will place the base against the wall of the mold box. This will become the opening for pouring our casting material. To help ensure a perfect match between the mold halves, we will make keys in the mold. This can be done simply by pressing the end of a pencil into the clay near the corners to make a slight indentation. Now we are ready for step three. Determine how much urethane you need by pouring rice into the mold and then pouring it into a measuring cup. We will need about 15 ounces. Since we will be using urethane, mold release is essential. We will use Polly's 2300. A light misting is all that is required. Mix the urethane thoroughly using a one-to-one -one mix ratio. Now pour the urethane slowly into the corner of the mold, letting it flow and squeeze out the air ahead of it. Never pour it directly on your part, as this could trap air bubbles. In 24 hours it will be cured. Step 4 involves removing the clay for pouring the second half of the mold. We carefully loosen the box from the base without loosening the sides. Once the base is detached, we remove the clay, making sure we do not also remove the part from the cured urethane. As you can see here, the indentations we made in the clay are now protrusions or keys in this half of the mold. Now we are ready for the final and fifth step. Apply mold release to the part and the box. Mix the required amount of urethane and pour it into the box as we did earlier. 24 hours later, we are ready to open the mold. More than likely, the urethane will slip right out of the box. If not, the sides can be pried open since we used a glue gun for the adhesive. Then, start at a corner and pry the two mold halves apart. Remove the part and your mold is ready for use. To hold the mold together when casting, use rubber bands. However, rubber bands by themselves could distort the mold, so cut pieces of wood or plastic the same size as the mold front and back, then rubber band the sides together, and now you are ready to create multiple parts in the casting material of your choice.